Welcome back to this platform, this United plug on it. Subscribe for more updates of Manchester United. So, let's go. Manchester United's incoming co-owner Sir Jim Ratcliffe is quickly gaining a solid reputation for getting the individuals in-house, who he feels will push the Reds back to where they need to be. The appointment of Omar Barada from Manchester City was the first sign of the new look United being formed. Managing to persuade a key figure at the City Football Group to cross the divide shows the pulling power the Reds hold when showing signs of fresh optimism. Now Ratcliffe's next target also seems willing to make the big leap. Men's Sport understands Dan Ashworth wants to leave Newcastle and join the Reds. Ineos are thought to be so confident of Ashworth's arrival, they are no longer sounding out alternatives. Even so, should his appointment be confirmed, it would reflect a major coup for United. The project at St. James's Park is starting to take shape following their Middle East takeover in 2021. While form has dipped this season, qualification for Europe is not out of the question for the next campaign, and once financial fair play FFP concerns are addressed, you would not bet against Newcastle making another push for the top four. It is also clear how strongly the Magpies will fight to keep hold of their man. In December, Newcastle boss Eddie Howe gave a glowing reference for his sporting director when the links first emerged. I've got no doubt that Dan is here for the long term, but it's probably a question for Dan rather than me, he explained in a press conference. Of course, I've spoken to Dan but not necessarily about that. It's very difficult to comment on speculation, whether that be a player or someone in Dan's position. I think whenever someone is in the role of importance that Dan is, hugely important, and he's done a really good job in helping us in loads of different ways, building departments, the training ground, he's connected with everything that goes on in terms of the decision making at the football club. He's hugely important, and has been a really calming influence behind the scenes, his vast experience has really helped. One of the traits which will particularly excite the United boardroom will be Ashworth's calming influence. United fans know all too well how much noise has been surrounding the club in recent years. The Reds have lurched from one crisis to another with drama at every turn. Bringing someone like Ashworth in who can act as a stabilizer behind the scenes would be extremely beneficial, and is no doubt one of the reasons Ratcliffe is working so hard to bring him to the club. The task now is to prize Ashworth away from Newcastle's grip. Again, and again. Why Manchester United are repeating preseason approach. Man United are set to return to the United States this summer for their second preseason tour in a row. So, Sir Jim Ratcliffe isn't kidding when he says he wants Manchester United to be the best team in the world again. It is far easier said than done though. United not only have work to do on the pitch, but they also have to change their reputation off it, from a team synonymous with recent failure to one renowned for success. You only have to take a look at their provisional preseason plans to see why regaining market control in North America is such an important part of their plans. As United are planning to return to the United States for their preseason tour this summer, with the suggestion they will face both Liverpool and Arsenal in friendly fixtures that are not part of a wider Premier League tournament. It was not long ago that United were the most popular English side in the United States. While the club might argue that they still are when using their own metrics, recent TV viewing figures tell the true story. United were ranked as the third most popular football team in the States last year with Real Madrid fourth. Only the American national teams for men and women were higher. No other English clubs were in the top seven overall, yet there is clearly a shift in power. If you filter the votes by age demographic, United dropped to fifth for Generation X, behind Real and Barcelona, and millennials ranked them as popular as Manchester City. They could soon be behind them. Then there are the viewing figures, a more reliable gauge than judging a fan as someone who simply follows you on social media, or is even just aware of your existence. The Premier League recently surpassed Liga MX as the most popular league in the United States, but United are not the most popular club to watch. Last year, United were only the 14th most watched side in the US, behind domestic rivals Tottenham, Newcastle, Chelsea, Arsenal, Liverpool and City, and were just two places ahead of Everton. City's rise to second place was helped enormously by their prolonged on-field success, and the fact that the Champions League final was watched by 3.4 million people in the United States. A reminder of the underlying need for sporting improvement as well as commercial improvement. Success on the pitch is the best way to improve United's global popularity, though it is also the hardest to achieve given there is no guaranteed formula to produce it. Far easier is to increase your presence in local marketplaces. United will not only take a boots-on-the-ground approach with another pre-season tour, 
but will do so boosted by their record front of shirt sponsor with Qualcomm. The United States technology firm has agreed to a deal believed to be in the region of 60 million per year to be one of United's main sponsors from next season, with the Snapdragon logo set to adorn the front of their kits. It will not only help the company's global exposure but will also benefit United to be partnered with such a successful US business, which counts Apple as one of their own customers. The tech firm presented last year's trip stateside, and United even played in San Diego's Snapdragon Stadium against Wrexham. The plan is to play there again this summer. We know that Manchester United and the Premier League in general are growing in popularity across the US, said John Murto when confirming the 2023 tour. Every game was sold out during the last trip to America, though that is possibly an indication of the legacy fanbase they have cultivated, and the opponents they faced rather than encouragement that they are still the team to watch. The fact United are heading back so soon tells you all you need to know about how important growth is in that market, particularly with the North American World Cup now just two years away. United want to conquer the world themselves. Again, and again. Manchester United are continuing their preparations ahead of their trip to Kenilworth Road to face Luton Town this weekend. United claimed their third consecutive win after defeating Aston Villa 2-1 at Villa Park on Sunday. Rasmus Hodgland and Scott McTominay were on target for Eric Ten Hag's side, in between a Douglas Luiz strike. The run of form has seen United climb up to sixth place in the Premier League table, five points adrift of Villa, who remained fifth despite the defeat and Men's Sport has taken a look at some of the latest United talking points doing the rounds over the last 24 hours. So, Old Trafford will reportedly not be hosting this summer's soccer aid, as work could be carried out during the off-season, according to the Daily Mail. Probable upgrades or a new build of Old Trafford have been discussed ever since Sir Jim Ratcliffe completed his 25% takeover at the club. With that said, the railway line behind the stand would need to be closed for certain time periods for major work to take place. The fundraiser however, which sees celebs and ex-players face off, has raised close to $40 million for children's charity UNICEF eight times in the past. Stamford Bridge, the Etihad Stadium and the London Stadium have all hosted the fundraiser in previous years, and it is claimed that Chelsea's ground is expected to stage the match, which is scheduled for June 9th. Meanwhile, Casemiro is one of the latest players to cut ties with Nike, after teammate Lisandro Martinez. The Brazilian's exit, according to a report, coincided with Nike's decision to cut their budget by reportedly 2 billion, 1.58 billion, over the next three years. The 31-year-old had been wearing Nike since his professional debut, but was spotted wearing Adidas Predators at Villa Park. He is said to have now become an ambassador for the brand. On the other side, there is top four chances discussed. During the NBC Sports show, Paul Scholes, Darren Bent, and Darren Lewis were seen discussing United's chances of finishing in the top four this season. Scholes said, I think it was important to get these players back, especially with the youth blend we've got. Real talented players. I think they'll finish above Tottenham and Villa. I think they'll catch them and finish above them. The next six games are fairly winnable, obviously one of them's Man City, who knows, but I think we're going to qualify for the Champions League.